a customer sent us this QNAP unit for repair, which is currently stuck on the booting. So it's a system booting. It's been doing that for about an hour now, so clearly it is not booting through. So let's open it up and find out why. All right, the first thing I'm noticing is this RAM brick is actually loose or was loose in the system. And on the back side of it, there's some missing capacitors. Taking a closer look under the microscope, we can tell that right over here, we have a missing capacitor. So the RAM brick is damaged. And over here, we also have two more missing capacitors. These two right here. So my first step should probably be to replace this RAM brick and try again, but I do fear there's more to it. All right, I did try new RAM bricks, and unfortunately that did not resolve the issue, so this one's not as easy, but I did find something else. This is our motherboard. I have the unit on the side, and unfortunately someone did something they probably shouldn't have. Right over here, it looks like someone put a wire between the PS on and ground. So what that's gonna do is ground and short out the PS on line, which is supposed to be, I think, about three volts, shorts it to ground, makes it so that it's zero, and sends the automatic turn on signal to the power supply. So no matter what, right now we're getting a turn on signal to the power supply, even though it shouldn't. So what I'm gonna wanna do next is remove this wire, because it shouldn't be there, and see what we're actually getting in terms of symptoms. So I'm not gonna remove the motherboard out of the unit, but I am gonna desolder this. Okay. I'm trying to do it in a way y'all can see on camera. Okay. There we go. So now that we've removed that jumper, let's plug it in and see what we get. So it's no longer auto-powering on like it was before. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it was auto-powering on the moment that I did plug it in. We're not getting that, so let me press power. And the unit does appear to be dead. I can't get it to boot up. So most likely this is actually gonna be the same repair that we did in one of our other videos with the processor on the back of the motherboard is probably defective and needs to be replaced. We'll remove the motherboard, prep it for our rework machine, and replace that processor chip. As always, we wanna check our CMOS batteries since they have about a five to seven or eight year lifespan. And that's about how old these batteries are from these units. We should be seeing about three to 3.3 volts, which is what we're getting, but we're gonna go ahead and replace it anyway since we have brand new ones. But as always, if we flip our motherboard over to the backside, the chip that we will wanna replace is this one over here. Most commonly, these devices have that chip fail, and this is what causes the no power that we're experiencing right now. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and replace next and see where that takes us. To do that, we're gonna to need to prep the board in this area. It's gonna get very hot, so all the plastic's gonna melt if we don't remove it. We'll also go ahead and remove our RAM sticks. So we wanna be very careful because there's a lot of very small capacitors in this area. All right, so that's the heat sink and that's the chip we're gonna remove. And to make it a little bit easier for the removal process, I'm gonna clean off that old thermal paste. So we have a nice smooth surface to grab onto the chip. Okay, and lastly, we'll remove the large heat sink for the main processor. So we're gonna remove this connector plastic for the fan. And this one's usually a little bit trickier to remove just because it has more pins, so more friction. There we go. All right, and the rest are gonna be the capacitors and plastic over here. And we're just gonna, we're gonna cover those with the Kapton tape. Perfect, let's go ahead and flip it and do the other side. All right, our motherboard is fully prepped for the rework machine so that we can go ahead and remove that BGA chip. So let's go ahead and do that next.
our chips installed. Now we can go ahead and remove all of the Kapton tape. Doesn't look like any of the plastic melted, so the Kapton tape did its job. Let's check this side. Okay, so we do have some trouble. It looks like a capacitor got lifted off of the board right here and is no longer attached. So we're gonna have to solder that back on. All right, and when this type of stuff happens, I do wanna take care of it immediately. Might have to add some flux. Let's get a different approach here. I'm gonna get my better tweezers first off. We're gonna go ahead and clean off the old solder on both sides. Add just a tiny little bit of solder to only one side, and we're gonna try soldering it down again. Okay, that felt a lot better. Try moving it. Nope, it's on there nice and tight. I'm gonna rotate it just to make it easier to solder. Now we're gonna need to solder that other side down. Actually, we're gonna rotate it all the way. Clean off that excess flux. All right, now we can go ahead and remove the other capped on tape over here. All right, and it looks like no components were lifted or removed. Board's a little bit dirty, but that's okay. Okay, and everything looks to be in good condition over here. Oh, looks like the edge of our battery, CMOS battery holder here kind of melted just a tiny little bit, but I don't think that'll affect uh, its ability to hold the battery in, in any way. Next, let's go ahead and put our processor back in. On the front side, we did have some thermal paste that was on the edges, and I'm actually noticing just a tiny little smidge on the back contact point, so we're actually gonna clean that off And then the next thing I wanna do is actually clean off the old thermal paste off of the chip. And we're gonna put some new stuff on there. Same thing here. All right. Now let's take it back off and make sure we got good spread. All right, and it does not look like we have great spread, so most likely I didn't put enough. If we zoom in, it looks like there's a couple spots over here and over here. So let's add a little bit more, and that should do it. All right, so earlier our battery was showing about, I think it was three or 2.9 volts, and ideally we're getting 3.3, and that's what a new one is gonna give us, and that's what we have with this new one. Let's go ahead and install that. Perfect. Go ahead and put our clips back on, connector clips. All right, and on this side, we're gonna go ahead and put our heatsink back on. Same thing, we're gonna clean off the old thermal paste, put some fresh paste on there. And I'm just using isopropyl alcohol to remove the old stuff. And we have our new RAM sticks. All right, the unit is back together. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. Oh, system booting and then it turned off. Oh, system booting. So I'm noticing we have our status light over here that is green. That was not coming on earlier. And our fan is continuously spinning, which was also not happening earlier. So let's wait just a couple minutes. I'm also gonna connect it with our ethernet to our network and see if we can detect it on our network once it's done booting. And it is detecting the LAN, the light for the LAN is flashing. While we wait, we're gonna have a nice refreshing Coca-Cola. Okay, it looks like we are booted in. And I did put a SSD in there just for now so we can boot it all the way up. We are now in our control panel here. So this is our unit. It looks like everything's working. Um, so currently it is booted in. So it is operational. 
And that's gonna be it for today. So if you have a similar QNAP device or different type that you would like for us to fix, we'll have links down in the description below for you to contact us. Uh, we do have flat rate services for this one since it typically doesn't have this many issues. Um, but otherwise, if you like the video, leave us a like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.